Good afternoon and welcome to the open evening for Windsor College, part of the Windsor Forest Colleges Group. We find ourselves in very strange times as yet again, rather than having a physical open evening, we're here on a virtual platform. My name's Amanda Down and I'm the Principal for the Sixth Form Colleges of Strodes and Windsor. And I'm joined this evening by Fiona Carthy, who will be handling all of your questions and fielding those through to myself, to my Executive Director of Sixth Form, Karen Griffiths, and to our Heads of Department at Windsor College. We're also joined by two of our students this evening, Tafania Robinson and Amber Nixon, who will be speaking to you as part of this evening's presentation. After this general presentation, you will be able to log on and listen to our Head of Admissions, Daljit Baines, who will talk you through the application process and also to a talk given by the Group Vice Principal for Student Services and the Head of Learner Services, Bernadette Jocelyn and Naomi Bailey. So, with no further ado, welcome to our virtual open evening. I do hope you're going to find this informative and that you will choose Windsor College as your choice of sixth form college. The benefit of coming to a sixth form college is multitudinous. We are specialists in what we do. With teaching staff who are specialists in their subjects, but specialists in this particular age group, so post-16 delivery. The benefits of a sixth form college is the wide variety of subjects we have on offer. Over 25 A-levels and a huge variety of level two and level three BTECs, which is constantly expanding, constantly growing. For this September, we're delighted that we're going to be able to offer amongst new courses, A-level philosophy, the BTEC extended certificate in sports science and the BTEC extended certificate in applied psychology. We're constantly looking at what we can grow and improve as part of our offering. And again, one of the benefits of our sixth form provision is the ability for learners to mix and match an A-level and BTEC provision. Our facilities are specifically designed to support sixth form delivery and that post-16 engagement. So whether it is our specialist laboratories, whether it is our IT resources, our fully equipped media studio for creative media, or indeed our support and engagement with the Old Court Theatre, there is something there to support all delivery. Our staff, as I've said, are subject specialists, but they're also specialists in helping and supporting this particular age group. And we are thrilled that our pass rates and our results continue to improve year on year. This year, scoring a 99.8% pass rate for all of our A-levels. And again, for a number of years running, 100% pass rate with all of our level three BTECs. We understand as part of being specialists in our provision, that one of the most important aspects to this is the transition. We understand that making the jump from school to sixth form is a scary one for most, a challenging one for others. And part of our provision, part of our support is helping our students to make that successful transition. To understand what it is that you are aspiring to do and doing everything that we can to support you in that transition so that you can successfully go on to achieve whatever it is that you want to do. So whether you are dreaming of going on to university, a higher apprenticeship, a further training course or the wake workplace, there is something here for everybody. And we are primarily situated to be able to help you make that successful transition. The step up in your skills, the step up in your knowledge. To make that transition from being in school all day, every day, to being a more independent learner, to learning how to manage your time so that when you do successfully progress into the workplace, you have the skills needed to help you do that. As I said at the beginning, we are delighted that we are part of the Windsor Forest Colleges Group. And in 2019, November, December, we had our first inspection as a merged college group. And I'm delighted to say that the findings of Ofsted validated all of the hard work that had been going on beforehand and absolutely supports that idea of the sixth form specialism. 
We've been rated as good and we were delighted to hear that it's the good advice that students receive from staff that helps to validate that. It's the fact that our learners develop a good understanding, not only of their subject contents, but of that wider social aspect that teachers are sequencing and developing the curriculum in a way that supports students to be successful and to grow. These are all really important aspects. We understand here at Windsor College that the quality of education is not just about what goes on in the classroom, it's about the wider aspects. It is about our community. And we strongly believe that we are a community. We are a family, we are a team. As part of that at the moment is of course everything that we are doing to ensure that our staff and our students stay safe. It's been a very difficult 11, almost 12 months for everyone, but we've taken huge precautions in order to ensure safety of everyone and we continue to do that. So with enhanced cleaning, the distribution of personal hand sanitizer for all of our students, two metre teaching zones, visors, perspex screens, all of those things are in place. We're delighted to have been able to roll out a laptop leasing scheme for our students, which has helped to support remote learning and has ensured that our learners are keeping on top and are continuing to be able to progress at a rate that ensures their success. We ensure that students and parents are kept up to date with what's happening at the college with a weekly update, which shares the good news stories, so the excellent work that our students have been engaging in and producing, along with some of the activities and events that are taking place, as well as weekly updates on where we are with the current situation and the COVID aspects of that. Lots of things going on at the moment, as I'm sure you're very aware of. So communication is key. And we are really proud of that communication that we have with parents and carers. Why choose sex form? I'm biased. I'm the principal. But I really do believe that Windsor is a great option for all students. It offers a small environment with a huge variety of choice. It offers that specialist support. It offers that specialist knowledge and passion. We believe very much that our students can go on to do anything. And we are delighted by the ever increasing number of high grades that our students are achieving, which is of course allowing them to progress onto some fantastic destinations. Windsor is a hugely dynamic and diverse place to be, but it is a fantastic environment. The fact that we are a small, compact department makes sure that we are a family. We work as a community together and that ensures we're able to customise all of our programmes to suit our students. From the EPQ that we offer to the various enrichment activities, which makes us a specialist sixth form. I've already talked a little bit about the fantastic destinations that our students are going on to and on the screen in front of you, you can see the variety of different places that our students are going on to. So whether it's my lovely Adil on the left hand side of my screen and the right hand side of yours maybe, uh, who completed a BTEC Level 3 Extended Diploma in Creative Media and has gone on to study International Marketing, to Mia who's gone on to study Linguistics at University College London. It's a huge variety, but as I said at the beginning, students go on to a variety of destinations. So whether your pathway is university, whether it's a higher apprenticeship or a training scheme, or actually, if at the moment you're just not sure, we can help you. We are perfectly equipped to support you, to give you that advice and guidance that you know and you need to get you to where you want to be. As part of that, we have higher education programmes here at the college in a number of different areas. And we are delighted that we have been able to roll out some new level four programmes here at Windsor. We're specialising at the moment in the arts. So we have a level four programme in performing arts, a level four programme in art and design and a level four programme in creative arts. But we are continuing to look at expanding that. A perfect opportunity for those students who need a foundation year before progressing on, aren't quite sure about their next steps or just simply have enjoyed their experience with us so much 
that they decide where the place that they want to stay at. We understand that part of being successful is not just about the grades, it's about everything else that sits underneath it and supports those grades. It is the support of your subject teachers. It's the feedback that you get that helps you to make that progress. It's that understanding of exactly what it takes to get those really high grades in your exams, in your courses. It's that understanding of the changes of the most up-to-date resources that you need. It's that understanding of strategies that really work with post-16. It's that understanding of that additional support, the careers advice, the tutorial support, the enrichment opportunities that help you to be successful and ensure that when you leave us, you can go on to your desired outcome. Programmes of study at post-16 look a little different to programmes of study at school as part of Key Stage 4. You go from studying eight to ten courses where I'm sure most of you will be feeling that there are some that you don't want to be doing anymore to drop down to three courses of your choice. But your study programme is made up of much more than that. For every hour that you spend in the classroom, there will be an hour of independent study that you are doing. This is the shift from it being primarily about the teacher to if you're going to university, being much more about the student and about the independent work that the student does. You can see there that it's career support, enrichment and core studies. So what does it take to join us? Five or more grades at grade four or above qualifies you for one of our A-level programmes. You can add to that the extended project qualification. You can add to that a variety of other things. Four or more GCSEs at grade four or above qualifies you for one of our BTEC programmes. And if you don't quite make those four GCSEs, then we would be looking at a foundation year, a level two pathway year that allows you to progress onto that level three pathway. Please do check our website for further details about the specific entry criteria for our subjects. You will find that most of them have got some individual criteria in there, so please do double check to make sure that you are choosing the right courses for you. Lots of changes going on. You will all be aware that A-level subjects are linear two-year courses, which means that all assessment is at the end of your second year. Level three BTEC courses have also been going through some changes and new BTEC courses now have an externally assessed unit to them. For some courses, that is a formal examination. For others, it is a controlled assessment and it varies from course to course. Again, details of these can be found on our website or indeed you can ask questions about these in the chat with the heads of department and the curriculum team later. The majority of our students, as I've said, will study three main courses for two years. Universities, higher apprenticeships always make offers based on three good A-level grades or the equivalency, so an extended diploma at BTEC. However, for those students who join us with half or more of their GCSEs at grade seven or above, we do look at whether a four course programme is going to be applicable but that's very much on an individual basis. And it is this discussion that will take place with one of our specialist team, both at your interview stage and at enrolment. Students can choose to add the extended project qualification to their programme of study, either in the first year or the second year. This is a mini research project that's really popular with students. It allows you to specialise in a subject of your choice. And often, if you're looking to go on to university to study something that's a little bit off piste, and for some reason, I've dealt with two astrophysicists in the last couple of weeks at interviewing, this is an ideal opportunity for you to demonstrate your passion and your interest. So whether you're interested in writing your own Gothic short story, whether you're looking at a project to do with upcycling, or whether indeed you want to question, do fish have feelings? there is something out there for everyone. So a great opportunity. Again, if you'd like to have more information about that, you can ask as part of the chat now or with the curriculum team. The most important part about any of this is you as the student and your time to think about what is it that you really, really want to do? 
Choosing your subjects for post-16 is incredibly important. It's probably one of the most important choices you will make. And yet, ironically, it's the shortest period of time that you will be in education. So having spent seven years at primary school, five years at secondary school, it is two years. But actually, with all the holidays taken out, it's more like 18 months at post 16 that then springboards you onto the next part of your journey. So it's time to think really carefully about what you want to do in the future. What is it that you're going to need? Think about what you're really good at. Talk to your teachers, talk to your parents. They might actually have some good advice here. Come onto the group chats and ask some questions. Think about what you enjoy. Part of being successful at anything is to choose what we are really passionately enthusiastic about. It really helps to motivate you, particularly on a cold, dark January day. Think about what study skills you're gonna need for each of those subjects. Are they things that you're good at, that you're naturally inclined towards? Think about whether the subjects you're choosing complement each other. Do they fit together well? But most importantly, think about your next steps. Choose the subjects that are going to help you. And if in doubt, keep your options open. Please don't choose something because your best friend is doing it. It's never a good idea. Please don't choose something because you think it's the right thing to do. And please don't choose something because you think it's going to be the easy option. Unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever way you look at it, post-16, every subject is going to have its challenges. So think really carefully, but please be assured that we will do our very best to support you at every step of the way. Before I pass on to talk about the opportunities that there are here in a broader sense, I'm going to pause and I'm going to invite my two students who are here this evening, so Tafania and Amber, if I could ask you to come on and say a little bit about what it's been like to be a student at Windsor College, please. This is one of those lovely moments, isn't it? Ah, Tafania, <laughs> hello, <laughs> lovely. It's like one of those lovely sort of, you know, moments of looking into the darkness and hoping somebody's going to speak to you. Hello, welcome Tafania. Thank you. So, hi everyone, uh, my name is Tafania. Uh, I'm the Student Union's President here at Windsor College. Uh, I study A-levels History, Sociology, English Language, as well as the Extended Projects Qualification. Uh, I hope to study Law and International Relations at University. Uh, the college has helped me so much with that from ensuring my personal statement was exceptional to pushing me to get my application in early. Uh, I very much love Windsor uh, and, the, and the community it offers. I miss being in college. <laughs> um, the teachers are amazing though. Um, obviously now that we've uh, had to move to virtual learning, I've had to adapt waking up early in the mornings for my lessons. <laughs> um, sitting in front of the computer for hours, I've had to find other things to do. I've taken up a bit of uh, art recently, for example, and uh, my core studies teacher is always suggesting activities for us to do, so that's great. And of course, the Student Union has been posting a few events virtually for students just to communicate, so that's all for me. <laughs> Thank you. I should point out to everybody that Tafania has been our student union president this year. Um, so fantastic. It's been dealing with a rather sort of strange year, I think we'd say, wouldn't we, Tafania? It's not been a normal year at all, yeah. but doing very well at keeping the students going. Thank you. Amber, I'm hoping you're there. I am. Hello. Hi, Amber. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amber. I'm part of student union and I am a tutor at. I get to Windsor College. I do a level three extended diploma in performing arts. I love my subject so much. I have three amazing teachers, Nat, Jamie and Imogen. They are so supportive. If there's ever anything I need help with or any other students need help with, you can just ask them and they'll understand and they'll help you. I know Natalie is perfect for always sending me extra information when I need it because I'm I like having more of a structure and she, it, she's amazing at that, just asking for it and then they're there, they give you the help. Lockdown has been interesting. In a way, um, my course was changed. 
Oh dear, I think we might have lost you, Amber. Okay, that's really unfortunate. I think I've lost Amber. Okay, I'm going to move on, but thank you hugely to my two students who've been here this afternoon. It's really um, a big ask to step up and speak to parents and students, even if we can't see your lovely faces this afternoon. So thank you to both Amber and Tafania, um, who have got different experiences. Uh, Amber's a first year student, Tafania's a second year, but obviously sharing with you their experiences of what it's like to be part of the college group. Um, it isn't just about, as I said, what goes on in the classroom. It is those other opportunities because we understand that part of our role is to equip our students to move on and out into the big wide world, hopefully not too scary. But it is developing those skills and giving them some things that hopefully will remember the good parts of what's there, that wider experience, which helps you to develop on. And on the screen, you can see some of the things that have been going on. So from the trips and visits to the events that take place uh, with our student union, except engaging from sort of mindfulness and well-being to the various performing arts events, trips to Auschwitz um, and various other places. And there's some more information there on the side. Um, we have a very active student union who meet as part of our parliaments and our student liaison committees. They help to get organisations and groups up and running and lead on many of the competitions and student events that we would normally be running. So lots of opportunities for our students to get involved. Amber touched a little bit, and as did Tafania, on the support that we offer our students. And again, this comes back to us being specialists and understanding the needs of our students. It can be a very challenging time. So it's support within the curriculum courses, understanding what students need in order to help them to learn effectively, in order to help them to progress really well and go on to be successful. It's the support from tutorials, so that engagement with up applications for the next step. So whether that is completing a UCAS application, whether that is applying for jobs or apprenticeships, whether that's looking for other opportunities, that is there and supported by both the tutorial team and the curriculum team. We have a fantastic learning support team, both in terms of study skills, which is operated from within the learning centre, to the discrete learning support team, who are amazing and do a brilliant job at supporting our students when they need it. In addition, we have specialist careers teams who are there and available for students, either with group activities with external speakers or with one-to-one -one guidance. And it's really important. These next steps, it's really key that you get that right. But actually having somebody who is independent, who can show you all the options and talk you through things is really key. And we are delighted that we're able to offer our students that. There are a number of workshops that take place throughout the year, whether that's careers related, enrichment activities, or just to do with the wider community. Those are all part of the Windsor experience and being part of our family. So what next? This is about hopefully the application stage and we guarantee applicant status to students who come from many schools. It means that we will prioritise your application and guarantee you an interview as soon as possible. But please don't worry if your school is not one of those listed on the screen. We will endeavour to ensure that we interview you as quickly as possible as well. And we take each individual application on their own merits and basis. So it's an application to us telling us which subjects you would like to do. You will then be invited to an interview with a member of our specialist team who will talk you through your aspirations, talk you through your career choices, talk you through the subjects that you're looking at, put together a valid programme of study for you, talk you through the entry criteria and hopefully help you to confirm those choices. Hopefully we then make you an offer, you accept that offer and then it comes to enrolment, that point after you've had your results.
Normally, in a year, we would be inviting students in in the summer term for a welcome day, a chance to come and be a part of our family and see what it's like to be a member of Windsor College for a day. Whether or not we're going to be able to run that this year, we will nevertheless continue to do activities to support our students. If you haven't yet had an opportunity to do so, please do go online, take the virtual tour of Windsor College, look at the information about each of the subjects online. Please do look at the work that is there to support both year 10 and year 11 students. It will help to give you an idea of what the subjects are like, what you can expect when you join those, and really what you're going to be studying. Thank you very much for listening this afternoon. Um, I'm going to pause there, Fiona, for any questions. Um, just to say that uh, Amber is back if we want to hear from her. Um, so, um, Amber, did you want to finish off what you were starting to talk to us about earlier? Uh, yeah, sorry. Well, I was about to say about online learning and then my Wi-Fi decided to crash. So that has definitely been one of the difficulties of doing online classes, having um, a Wi-Fi that chooses when it wants to work. But other than that, my teachers have been amazing at adapting to this and finding really good ways to still be engaging, especially in a performing arts subject when it's a very practical, hands-on experience. They've, they've been amazing at finding different ways around that. We've been doing radio plays, which means we can write them from home and record them over Google Meets. And we've been doing singing, which in a way has been better for those people who want to be able to build their singing skills at home in their safe environment, which I think is quite nice. But I know that I will want to continue drama is what I've always wanted to do. And I am confident that my teachers are going to help me get there in every single way possible. Fantastic. Thank you. And I, I share your, um, yeah, your issues with Wi-Fi, Amber, but thank you very much for coming back online and joining us. Thank you for sharing that. Fiona. Okay, we do have questions coming in. Um, <clears throat> so we will start to run through some of these. Um, is there a specific deadline for the applications? No, there isn't, but I would recommend that you get your application in as soon as possible. Um, it guarantees you a place on the subject of your choice. So the earlier your application, the sooner and more likely you are to be guaranteed your choice of place on your subjects. That's great. Um, also, we've got um, a, a question about how parents are kept informed. Um, the question says that, you know, as college is more independent for students, how are parents kept in the loop of how they're doing? OK, so we report to students every half, sorry, to parents every half term. Uh, we have a parent portal where parents can log in and they can track their son, daughter's attendance. Um, they can see the communications with staff and obviously parents are welcome to contact staff any time and staff will contact parents if there are any particular concerns but in addition to that we publish regular parent updates which give an overview of what's going on at the college generally and as I said we report to parents every half term on progress for students so that includes current working grades attitude to learning grades and targets in terms of progress we also have student parent review day and in fact last week we had our first virtual student parent review day for our second year students which went very well so yes lots of ways in which we're keeping in touch with parents and we continue to do that at the moment we also have our weekly updates which go out to parents through the mailers um, and those have proved very popular so that might very well be something that we continue to do which is a great way of keeping everyone in touch with what's going on particularly at a time of lots of change that's great, thank you. Um, what about uh, students that have an, um, is it an e ECH? E EHCP. EHCP. Okay, so students who have an EHCP obviously uh, will be interviewed with that in mind and will meet a member of our learning support team. They are there and on hand and will discuss the individual needs of each student. So it 
it's very difficult to answer that question specifically because it is very much about the individual student. But we do have a fantastic learning support team at Windsor College who are very adept at supporting students in all manner of ways. Thank you. And, um, an interesting question about if, if a student's not very disciplined um, in terms of working independently, um, is college the right choice for them? How do we support them to, you know, be more adult maybe and prepare them for university? Okay, so part of the transition, I would argue, from school to university is about students learning to be disciplined and learning to manage their time. So there are a number of ways that we do that. Within each curriculum course, learning is scaffolded so that students can take steps towards becoming more independent. Um, work will be set for independent study, so students are given guidance on what to do and are given extra activities to do that will help them to become independent. Students are encouraged through course studies to look at their timetable at the start of the year and to map out where their independent study time is going to go onto their timetable. So to actually think about where are the lessons that you are going to block out and go and work in the library. Our study skills support team are on hand to assist and help students with all manner of things from organisation to time management to uh, note taking to a whole variety of things that help, again, to become independent and manage that change, that switch. In addition to that, of course, if there are issues and concerns, our student management system is designed to be supportive as much as it is designed to raise concerns and awareness. And if there are concerns about that, then we would be getting in touch with parents and helping to address some of those concerns very early on. That's great. Thank you. A, a really nice balance, isn't it, between that building your independent learning, but being supportive Absolutely. to do so. Absolutely. And I would say, you know, again, it, it's, it does sound really trite when you keep saying it, but it is absolutely true that as specialists, because this is what we do, we understand that it's a different journey for different students. So some students will find the transition from GCSE to post-16 really easy. Others will not hit that, that roadblock until their second year. You know, again, it's that kind of constant stepping up each time. For others, it's a bit more of a, you know, it, it is a bit more of a kind of sort of a wobbly line. But we are very adept at picking up on those students who need that extra support. You know, it was lovely to hear Amber talking about the specific support she's received from her course tutors and her subject staff who've been helping her to keep on track and have supported her you know she talked about needing things to be very clearly organized for her and it, you know it's it's really good I think for everybody to hear from students that that's the experience they're having as well as me saying that's what we provide we understand that each student will have a different experience and will need different interventions and different help that's right. Thank you. And um, got some questions here about interviews. Um, so um, can parents join the interview? Because, of course, I presume you're interviewing remotely now. We are. We are interviewing remotely. Um, parents can. We we try to sort of suggest that it should be the students um, because we want to hear from the students and we want to make sure that it's it's about the student and the student taking the lead in this but yes parents are welcome to join should they wish to but we would we would ask that it's the student who is being interviewed in the nicest way possible please yeah that's fine um, and then what about how do students use their spare time at college Okay, so the college day runs from nine to half past four. Um, each lesson is an hour and a half. Students do not necessarily need to be in college at nine o'clock unless they have a lesson. So students' days are variable. Um, if they have got, again, we're going back to the, the timetable when you get that at the start of the year, and it's looking at what might go in there. Some of that will be independent study time, so time that students are setting aside to study. Some of that will be time that they are using for enrichment. 
some of that time may very well be taken up with volunteering or work experience. Um, that's the other thing that students add to their portfolio. And again, that's very individualized and about different students who are seeking different pathways. Um, some of that will be, uh, <laughs> I guess I'm going to call it additionals. So if I think about my performing arts students, they will spend a lot of time uh, rehearsing and preparing for performances. The photography students and the creative arts students will spend a lot of time literally creating things. So whether that's a piece of artwork, um, photographs, whether that's a digital film, they will spend their time with that. Those students who are doing extended project qualifications will have additional research work that they are doing. So there's work that's there. Uh, there are opportunities to get involved with external speakers and the events that are taking place to join our student union executive and be part of that. So there are lots of individual opportunities, but again, it's very much about the individual students. Okay, that's great. And um, what about applications? How somebody's saying they, they've actually applied and are waiting to hear back? What's the normal turnaround time to be um, invited into interview? I'm, I'm going to say I'm not the best person who's placed to answer that because I don't I just I just deal with the people as they come through. I think if somebody would like to ask that question to Daljit Baines, he's probably got a better handle on that one. But if you are concerned about your application, my advice would be to contact our admissions department and just to check that everything is in hand. We do try to get through um, all applications as quickly as we possibly can. Um, and we do try to sort of turn them around fairly quickly. We've got interviews that are coming up after half term. So again, if you haven't yet heard, and I know that we have been arranging interviews into March, please do get in contact with our admissions department who will help hopefully be able to find you and reassure you that you are on the list to be interviewed. That's fine. And also if anybody wants to just leave their details today, we can follow Absolutely. up. Absolutely, we can do, yeah. Um, I've popped the admissions email address in the chat box as well. Um, just looking through um, the next question. Um, what about the actual interview? What, what, how does that work? Okay, um, so generally speaking, we ask students about their, how things are going at school at the moment, so how they're progressing. Um, for students, it's been, we understand, a very odd time, quite a disrupted time. Some students have sat mock exams, um, others sat assessments and tests all the way back in September, October time, and others had them planned for just after Christmas, and of course they've now all been delayed. So quite a disrupted time for many of our current applicants coming through. So we talked to them a little bit about their experiences. We talked to them about their long-term aspirations. What is it they're really hoping to go on to do? Um, and then we talk to them about the subject choices that they're hoping to have. We talk to them through some other subject choices that they may not have considered if they're not sure about their subject choices. We explain the entry criteria um, and we try to understand why they've chosen those subjects. So that, that's really what we're trying. We're trying to make sure that students are as fully informed as possible about the subjects that they're choosing. We try to make sure that they're ones that are going to enable them to move on to the pathway that they're hoping to do so. Um, and we do our very best to make sure that it's a coherent programme of study for them. That's great, thank you very much. Um, one or two questions around specific um, topics that are included in subjects and uh, Karen and I are suggesting that actually if you want to jump onto the live chat which is currently running at the same yeah. time <laughs> this presentation um, by going to the website and clicking on the live chat button you can ask those questions directly of the subject tutors and you can have a private one-to-one -one conversation uh, with the subject tutors about your particular interests and get some good advice from them about the subjects if you want to explore that. So that's on our website um, and you just click on the little chat button at the bottom and one of the team will pass you on to the relevant person. Uh, yes. Just a, a, a shout out if there's any more questions. I can see two more have just come through, which is great, thank you. Um, roughly how many hours uh, a week are the, is a full-time programme? Uh, so a full-time programme of study, I'm going to have to do a little bit of calculation now, is that all right? Apologies. 
is uh, four and a half hours a week, Amanda, with each for each subject. Uh, subject, yes, I was there, Karen. So it's a roughly, it's roughly about fifteen hours a week of in class teaching, but double that because for as I explained earlier for every hour that you do in the class there is independent study so it's about 30 hours a week um, and obviously then there are enrichment opportunities and other aspects to that. Great thank you. Somebody's also asking um, whether or not we've got any sports pitches at we don't at Windsor, but because we are a joint sixth form college, so the Strodes and Windsor brands, one of the things that we are constantly expanding and growing is the use of both sites. So Strodes is quite a different site to Windsor, but we are a joint sixth form provision and a lot of our enrichment programmes will be growing to encompass both sixth forms. And, and what do they have at Strodes? Uh, we have a number of pitches, including rugby, football, uh, a netball courts, tennis courts, a uh, huge gym that is set up for basketball. Um, there are table tennis tables at Windsor, um, and there are those at Strodes as well. Trampolining, which takes place at Windsor, uh, sorry, at Strodes. But we are hoping to introduce some of those things into Windsor as well. OK, that's fantastic. Um, is it possible to take four subjects at A-level? As I explained, those students who have half or more of their GCSEs at grade seven or above, we will have an individual conversation with that student to understand why they want to do four and why, why that's the best thing for them. So it's not a, a no, but students would have to have half or more of their GCSEs at grade seven or above to qualify for a four A-level programme of study. And as I said, again, universities make their offers based on three good grades. So we always say to our students, you need to think quite carefully. You know, it's much better to have three A's than it is to have two B's and two C's, which is often what happens if you're spreading yourself very thinly. You have to think about the amount of work. The step up from GCSE to A level shouldn't be underestimated. So whilst the opportunity is there, we would always discuss with the individual student about the programme of study and about particularly what they want to do. Great. Um, and I know that you mentioned earlier about the EHCP. Somebody else is asking about um, if someone with autism um, wants to come to the college, but they're still not sure what they want to do, maybe have some language issues. Um, I'm suggesting that perhaps the learning support team could speak to them directly. I, th I think so. I think that that would that would be a better conversation with the learning support team because what we would need to make sure is that we can offer the right program of study and the right level of support for each individual student's needs. We really want our students to be successful. So it is a two way conversation to make sure that we can do what's needed and that we're the right environment as well for, for that particular student. So please get in touch with the learning support team. We can, I think we, we can probably put somebody in touch, Fiona, I think. That's great. That's what I've asked them to leave their, their details. Um, just somebody mentioned, just picking up on your um, points about the interview. Um, it's not a test, is it? No, it's no, 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 well. not at all. No, no. Hopefully it's a really friendly conversation. At least I would hope that's how it comes across to students. Um, it's, it's really just we're offering some support and some guidance. Um, we're interested to know why you're choosing the subjects that you are. Um, we like to know what our students want to go on to do. You know, we're here to help everybody be successful. We're here to help our students students achieve their aspirations but in order to do that we need to make sure that you're on the right program of study that you're doing the right courses for you that are going to help you be the most successful um, and that we're doing everything that we possibly can to make sure that that happens. Thank you. Um, somebody's also asked if you wouldn't mind repeating how many GCSEs you need to get into the sixth form. Absolutely. So for an A-level programme, it's a minimum of five GCSEs at grade four or above. However, as I said, please do check the website because 
each of our subjects has got individual entry criteria, many of which are grade five or above. So our sciences, our maths all require you to have a grade six or above in both the science and the maths. So please do check individual subjects and you can find that information on the website or indeed you can ask those questions in the chat with the curriculum team if if that's more useful. Four or more GCSEs at grade four or above qualifies you for one of our level three BTEC programmes. Um, what we do say again is please check the individual entry criteria and of course there's the real importance of GCSE English and GCSE maths. For many of our subjects students need both. For some, they only need one or the other. And of course, if students do not have GCSE English or Maths at grade four or above, they will need to resit it as part of their programme of study. So I'm afraid that that isn't me um, or Karen. We really aren't being cruel. That is a government requirement that all students are taking GCSE Maths and English until they have achieved at least a grade four. Is that something they can study alongside their programme? It is, providing it works with the programme of study and provide they meet the other entry criteria. Yes, absolutely. I'm just typing this in. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And we have a number of students who do that every single year. Um, quite often it might be, and it's very difficult, Fiona, because it will vary from subject to subject. So, you know, for example, you could be doing A-level English literature and not have your maths GCSE. So ideally you would do, um, but you, you know, we, we can look at some concessions and some, some pathways through that. So we will look at each individual student and we will look at the results they come to us with. Um, and we will do our best to find the right program of study for them that enables them to be successful. We don't want students to be on courses that they're, they're going to struggle with and that are not going to help them to be successful because that makes for unhappy students and, and we, we really don't want that. We want our students to be happy and we want them to be successful. And I suppose it emphasises the importance of really focusing hard on your English and maths. Absolutely, yeah. They are the core subjects for a reason. Um, you know, numeracy and literacy skills, we talk a lot about those, but actually they're key employability skills. So, you know, we talk about problem solving, how many subjects actually involve, you know, in percentages, um, basic numeracy. I know, you know, Karen and I often talk about Roman numerals and we're both English teachers, so it's quite hard sometimes to think about numeracy in English. But literacy, you know, the ability to communicate both in written form and in oral form, presentations, interview skills, all of those things are really, really important. So those core subjects of English and maths are absolutely key to being successful and moving on beyond actually level three studies. So if you're applying to university, you absolutely need your English and your maths. Thank you. Um, also, uh, I thought an interesting question would be about what if you don't, you know, if you don't quite get the grades, Will you help them? Will you help students to find a suitable alternative? Absolutely. So every student who comes through to us at enrolment and for the last couple of years, we've run surgeries sort of around GCSE results day where we often sort of counsel students who are very concerned or very anxious about their results. But on top of that, at enrolment, um, we will look at a student's results and we will look at what is the best programme study for them. And again, that might be finding some alternatives. So it might be looking at slightly adjusting the programme study. It might be looking at something completely new and different. And again, that's part of the reason why we offer the level two programmes of study. They are intended to be a gateway through to level three study. And for some students, that might be looking at what's on offer at Strodes, as well as what's on offer at Langley, as well as what's on offer at Windsor. OK, thank you. That's thank you. Uh, we're coming to the end of the session. So I um, just wonder if any more questions for Amanda and Karen, who is busy answering <laughs> lots of questions um, at the same time. Um, Amanda, I wonder if you could click on to the next slide. I can do. Um, just to remind everybody what's happening for the rest of the evening. 
Yeah, okay, so we've got a couple of things that are there coming up. At 5.45, as I said, I think earlier on, we've got a talk from our Head of Admissions, Daljit Baines, on how to apply to the college. So he will talk you through how to set up an account which will enable you to make your application. So if you haven't yet been able to do that, please take advantage of that. That's there and available. And at 6.30, we have a talk from our student services team. So that's Bernadette Jocelyn, the Group Vice Principal for Student Services and Naomi Bailey, our Head of Learner Services, who will talk you through some of the advice and help and guidance and services available from our team. So this covers a multitude of things from the student bursary scheme to the careers advisory team, the laptop leasing scheme, I believe there'll be more information about that. Um, there's a little bit about admissions and uh, in terms of admissions attendance monitoring, but some of the things that are available. But obviously also online at the moment is the talk with the tutors who are there and available through the live chat to answer any specific questions that students, parents might have about particular courses, about particular career pathways, or anything that might be significant from that. And then again, also available at the moment is the application stations. This is members of our admissions team who are on help on hand rather sorry to help you process your application and complete it now so it's kind of a live watch to help you kind of work your way through the application form should you wish to have that help that's fantastic i've just posted in the chat box just if you haven't already registered for any of those events the links um, to join so the how to apply link and the student services link the website the, the live chat again just to reiterate it's join the website which is www.windsor-forest.ac.uk again the link is in the chat and you click on the little icon in the bottom right um, of the corner and that's where you can ask all the questions that you need to ask about the subjects you're interested in what topics are covered in the courses what you might do outside of the lessons uh, and as Amanda said we've got our admissions team there so if you want to apply today but you need some help um, and you've got questions you want to ask about how to apply um, then you can just um, uh, speak to them on the live chat and there will, somebody will, will jump on and help you. Again, somebody again is asking where's the link to talk to the tutors. It's on the website. So you go to the home page of the website and you click on the live chat little box in the bottom right corner. OK, thank you very much. Uh, just a final reminder that we will we have been recording this um, session um, and this will be sent to you in an email. So you've got the chance to go through it again, have a look at the slides. Just remind yourself of the entry requirements and anything else that Amanda has covered today. Um, and if you have any queries um, about applying to the college, you can speak to our admissions team um, by email, admissions at windsor-forest.ac.uk. And they are also on live chat every day on the website. So you can always speak to somebody from admissions from 10 to four every single day, Monday to Friday. Okay, thanks so much, Amanda. That was um, a great session. Uh, lots of positive thumbs up from um, delegates today. So we hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you it. very much.